welcome back to another quick and a simple recipe from Dr. Philippe. And what I have today is a very special recipe. And I'll tell you why in a minute. What I'm making today is something called the Tawa Pulao. And a quick three second history. Tawa Pulao originated apparently in a small Pavaji stall in uh, Mumbai. Where one day a, a vendor had a lot of Pavaji left over. And he was really hungry so he just added some rice to it. And then came out to be with a few other condiments. Came out to be Tawa Pulao. So there you go. I'd like to show you that I have some leftover rice. And I would like to refresh my rice and I thought why not make a quick tawa pula with some uh, leftover veggies that I have in the freezer. There's no shopping that was done for this. It's just simple ingredients with what you have at home. If you want the exact quantities, you'll find the, all the information in the description box below. So to get started, I have some veggies. There's a little bit of ginger garlic paste here, carrots, some boiled corn, peas, beans. And what you cannot see here though is the green chilies. I have three or four green chilies that are slit. Okay. Along with that, I have some oil, onions and chopped up tomatoes, cilantro, mint, and a few garlic cloves chopped, okay? Um, I had some leftover mushrooms. Uh, we used to make something the other day and these were leftover, okay? And that's it for my veggies. Now, feel free to add any other vegetables you want. Boiled cauliflower, capsicum, whatever you like, okay? Tawa pulao is very unique. There's no set set of vegetables. You can, you know, you know, amp it up by adding um, almonds and cashews. You can amp it up uh, by adding a little extra cream, butter. You can do whatever you want. But these are a few things that I have. These are the powdered spices: salt, chili flakes, cumin powder, jeera powder, dhania powder, whole cumin, um, turmeric, one bay leaf, and this is some vegetable stock powder. This is the hack. Okay, people usually cook, add vegetable stock, but I like to add vegetable stock powder. And this, rather than putting a whole bunch of other spices, simply get your nearest store-bought pao bhaji masala and put two spoons of it, heap spoons. That is all there is. Another critical ingredient, uh, if you can see here, um, this is known as makhan, which is basically tasty butter. There you go. First things first, I'm gonna heat up a nice kadai um, or a round bottom pan. I'm gonna add some makhan to it, and I don't want the makhan to burn, um, or the Indian creamy butter to burn. It gives an extra punch of flavor. So to prevent that from burning, I'm going to add the oil that I just showed you. That's the first step, okay? You can make this as spicy as you want, or as uh, uh, you know, non-spicy and flavorful as you want. You get this uh, gentle hint of uh, pao bhaji. This is an amazing, amazing recipe for uh, especially uh, winter time or rainy season. Okay. Um, to this, to flavor this, I'm going to add the bay leaf and the cumin seeds. That's the first thing I'm going to do. With a little bit from it coming in. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add some ginger garlic paste. There you go. I'm going to let that cook out for about a minute, just until the raw edge goes off. Once that is done, I will add the onions and tomatoes. Note that I'm adding them together because I don't want the onions to fry golden. They have to be a little translucent and I think we can still achieve that, uh, you know, uh, by doing this. I'm going to let the tomatoes soften a little bit. I'm doing this on high heat. Okay. Now, for this, I will be sprinkling a little bit of salt because I want it to cook a bit. Okay, just a pinch again. Salt is to taste. There's no, you know, particular measurement. I'm going to let everything soften up a bit here. Okay. And I'm going to cook this for a good like four or five minutes until the tomatoes are soft. Tomatoes have softened. I'm, I'm adding some mint, uh, coriander and some garlic pieces. Just to, to give it an extra garlickiness. I personally like it. You can skip the garlic if you want to. You do have the option to skip. Next go in the mushrooms. I'm not putting cauliflower or potato. You can feel free to put potato, or you can actually refresh your rice with any of the remaining pao bhaji that you have at home as well. Like I said, it's a very versatile recipe, so feel free to, you know, experiment within reason. All right, once the mushrooms are sauteed a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and add all the other vegetables and uh, neatly start sauteing them in the spices. I want the carrots to cook a little bit, so what I can do now is just uh, 
boil everything with a little bit of uh, water. So just take a little bit of water, okay, just add that. I just want everything to soften up a little bit. So. Uh, the vegetables have released their own water and they're cooking down a little bit. Add all the powdered spices at once. Okay, and quickly thoroughly mix them up. Okay, the spices have to be a little more because rice usually does not have any flavor. So the spices have to be, you know, a little extra in terms of the salt, in terms of the tanginess, and then that kind of evens out with the rice when you make it. Um, you always keep checking and tasting for seasoning. And now that this whole thing is now come up to a beautiful flavor, I can smell the fragrance, add the remaining rice, and now the critical part is to stir. Stir in a way that everything is mixed, okay? And let it dry out. There you have it folks, amazing tawa pulao is ready. It's hot, it's steaming. One thing you might be wondering is why it's not red in color. I chose to skip the color part. I don't want to add any food color. Many stalls actually do um, to get that red color. Or you can add some Kashmir chili powder while you're making it if you want. The only thing I do for simple garnish, lemon juice. All right, and a little bit of chaat masala for a kick of sourness. That's pretty much it and enjoy hot.